This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is the BF Electronics Thrustmaster T3PA Pro load cell modification for the Thrustmaster pedal set. This creation comes to us from Bill Fletcher of BF Electronics out of Brisbane, Australia. They make a variety of different electronics, including a few for sim racing, including this load cell, which could be the answer to the Achilles heel of the Thrustmaster lineup, that being their pedal sets. The mod is not cheap. It goes for 150 Australian, but it is a huge upgrade to the flagship pedal set from Thrustmaster, the T3PA Pro. These pedals are already an upgrade to the Thrustmaster e ecosystem coming in at $146 on their own, but they are invertible and they're made of metal construction, but they are plagued by the Thrustmaster very light spring and potentiometer as the measuring device. Now Thrustmaster got its start way back in the 90s with the T1 racing wheel, really the dawn of sim racing. And that wheel really used a bungee cord for resistance. There was no force feedback and it's mostly made of plastic and pretty inexpensive parts. Now over the last 20 years, force feedback has come a long way. Thrustmaster has come a long way. They built an entire ecosystem of handbrakes, shifters, add-on wheels, and a variety of great wheel bases. However, their pedals have still been plagued by the same issues, usually using springs for resistance and using potentiometers for the measuring device. Even this set is part of that ecosystem and it's considered an upgraded set but it's still using those same devices to measure and offer resistance. Sure, they work fine, they can be driven well, and even the best of the best champions have used springs and pots and regular generic pedal sets to win championships. But the world has come a long way. Sim racing has come a long way. And today, there's demand for load cells and even hydraulics in our pedal systems because that's where the technology has come and that's how much sim racing has evolved across the board. Now, the BF Electronics load cell could be the answer to those demands out of sim racing for 2019. Now, the BF Electronics load cell mod is built to answer those demands and bring Thrustmaster pedals into the modern era. The BF Electronics load cell starts off, well, I can't even show you because I already have it installed into these pedal sets, but the load cell starts off with a paperclip style load cell common to things like digital scales. It's a 30 kilogram load cell and it's encased in a 3D printed shell that is perfectly designed to fit entirely within the cover of the T3PA Pro pedals. Also within the case is a circuit board, and then it is topped off with a sensitivity adjustment dial on top. Coming out of the case is also a length of wire with a red, white, and black wire ready to be installed. There are also a handful of quick connectors, enough to do the job, and even enough to return things to normal should you need to do so. The installation of the mod was very simple to install. You only needed two different Allen wrenches, a pair of pliers, and a pair of wire cutters. Beyond that, there are a handful of steps, but it took me about 45 minutes from start to finish, starting off with step number one, where you want to locate and remove the four bolts that hold down the heel plate. Remove those four screws and nuts and the cover plate and place them aside. Step two involves removing the 14 screws holding down the top black cover and also removing the six screws on the back side. Remove the black cover plate and place it aside for later as well. Step three, loosen the brake pedal limiter bar from one side. There are nuts on the back that need to be removed on one side and loosened on the other. Completely remove one of the top side bolts and swing the arm out of the way of the pedal. This is made easier by holding the pedal down, removing pressure. You can now flip the pedal forward and access its underside. Step four, remove the big spring. Keep this handy for later, and then you're gonna wanna remove the small spring and its retainer by loosening the screw on the bottom side of the pedals. Keep those pieces handy as well. Step five, install the small spring in its retainer onto the new load cell mod via the center hole on the metal part of the mod. Make sure it is installed on the top side facing up. Now the load cell mod should look like this. Step six, remove the lower brake pedal stop from the pedal base. Its mounting screw is hidden by the rubber covering and then once removed, cut the black wire inside the brake pedal and remove some of the covering exposing the red, white, and black wires. Step seven, 
Install the load cell mod into the brake frame with the dial facing towards the rear side of the pedal base. Use the alignment holes to find its position and press it down firmly into place. You can now install the big spring over the little spring so you don't forget this later. Step 8 involves joining our wires. Use the supplied quick connectors and match your colored wires together by inserting the same colored wires into a connector. One from the pedal that we exposed to the same colored wire from the load cell into the connector all the way and then firmly push down on the orange button with pliers until seated. Do the same for the other two wires and then you can tuck the wires out of the way nicely. Step 9 is to slowly flip the pedal arm back over and press it down on the spring, making sure that everything stays aligned properly and then reinstalling the brake pedal stop. Swing it over, install the screw, tighten the screw, and install the back nuts. Step 10. Now reinstall the black cover and all 20 screws backside and topside to hold it down in place. Step 11. Reinstall the heel cover plate and the four bolts with wing nuts and plug them back into your wheelbase. The calibration of this device is also very simple. You plug it into your wheelbase and the wheelbase doesn't even know that you've done the modification. It's within the parameters that the wheelbase is already expected. Now on the PC side of things, you can open up your controller panel and you can see your wheel and pedals in action. I used the dial to make certain that I was getting full braking and even dialed in just a hint of dead zone to be able to rest my foot on the pedal. From that point on, what you see is what you get and it should work on basically all PC games, but if there ever is a circumstance and it might happen on the Xbox or the PS4 where you're not getting full range, you can use that adjustment dial to make sure that you are getting full braking no matter the circumstances. Now in order to use it with an Xbox or a PlayStation, you would need to be able to use it with the appropriate wheels. So you would need these plugged into a TGT to be able to play on a PS4 and you would need this into the Sparco wheel if you wanted to play on an Xbox and so on and so on. Now it's time to use this out on track and see what it really does to upgrade these pedals. Now if you've been using a set of T3PA pedals and are used to them, the difference is huge. The pedal feels about five times as strong or takes five times the pressure I used to use. It is perfectly smooth and the Thrustmaster pedal arm and bass both hold up very well with this new added pressure. At five times the strength, it might even test your rig's pedal plate and its flexing points as well. The newfound strength of the pedal isn't to the point of distraction or exhaustion, but it is enough that some drivers are now going to prefer shoes while others still might prefer socks. I found that I could drive with either, whereas before the mod, I would never use shoes with a set of Thrustmaster pedals. Now when it comes to a stronger than sock worthy Thrustmaster pedal set, there are a few reasons that make it such a huge upgrade. Number one. The strength. The strength is much more like the strength you'd feel out of a real car pedal, making it much more that of a real simulation pedal set as well. Number two is with more resistance, I find myself protected from stabbing too much brake at times. When looking for light scrubbing of the brakes without doing too much change in balance, it can be done that much easier against higher resistance. And number three, the measuring of the pressure instead of the distance allows for much more accurate modulation of the pedal and at the moments of heavy braking, I can very slightly reduce or add pressure to the moment right before locking up the wheels much easier. Just a slight, the tiniest of lifts, or more accurately, reduction in pressure and locked up brakes start to spin the wheels again. This modulation also allows for better trail braking as again it is just a slight lifting of pressure as the car slows, turns in for apex and starts to put more load on the outside tire. Just keep reducing the pressure and the car is hooked up. After some extensive driving and some pretty heavy usage the load cell mod was operating perfectly and hidden within the cover of the Thrustmaster case was running as though it was part of the pedal set to begin with. Despite five times the pressure, they are quiet, they are smooth, and they felt as if they would hold up to this load forever. 
Now on this show, all the time I'm saying you don't need high-end equipment in order to be one of the best in sim racing. But with that said, I still prefer a load cell or a hydraulic pedal set to a potentiometer every single time. And with this modification, it finally takes Thrustmaster into the modern era, and they finally, with this mod, have a pedal set worthy of the quality of wheelbases that they've been producing for many years now. So it's really a pretty good modification, and I think you know I probably already am pretty favorable about it. But just to make things perfectly clear, let's go ahead and break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good, and that being that it's a great mod for Thrust master users USB saver plugs into the wheels still adds more pressure to a very light brake much better pedal modulation maintains cross compatibility Xbox PS4 easy to install installs like a factory mod can now race in shoes. Maintains a good pedal throw. Works inverted or in the GT style position. Adjustable sensitivity. Better feeling pedal. And makes me faster. And now on to the not so good. And the first one being that it is an expensive upgrade. 3D printed, a little rough around the edges. Shipping from Australia, and no adjustable distance. And now onto the bottom line. Let's start off with the wiring and the installation. Now the quick connectors, they're very cool. They're very easy to use. And if you do want to ever return them to a normal use, you can do it just, you have the supplied connectors already. However, with how much I love this mod, I'm gonna go ahead and go for the permanent installation. I'm gonna solder the wires nicely and I'm gonna heat shrink them to give them that longevity. I know nothing will ever go wrong because I do love this mod. Now the next thing is to compare them to the Fanatic pedals. I think a lot of Thrustmaster, especially the high-end Thrustmaster users, might even be using a set of Fanatic pedals. Now number one, that means two USBs, it means no cross compatibility to the Xbox or the PS4, and you are talking about $360 versus $146 pedals with a $150 pedal modification for a little bit under $300 for comparison. Now, there are a few things that are a little bit nicer perhaps about the Club Sport pedals. The base is made of that really nice billet aluminum and you do have a little bit more adjustment in the pedal. So I love that this had the original or near original distance or throw in the pedal. That modification didn't take any space away. However, it didn't give you the ability to dial in just how far you want it to be like you can on some of the more high-end pedals, but we are still talking about sub $300. And it still plugs into the wheelbase, still keeps it to one USB, and still maintains the cross compatibility. Now, as far as the load cell, it's not quite as strong as a Fanatic pedal, so it's still a little bit lighter, and that's why I still was comfortable with socks or with shoes while driving this one, but it is a little on the light side for most of the load cells that you're gonna test out there. Now, BF Electronics, they also do have a 50 kilogram version. That's about halfway between this strength and say a club sport pedal set. And they also have intentions of making an adapter so that this could be a standalone pedal set for maybe like a Logitech G29 user. But what's really nice about this is that it keeps it within that Thrustmaster ecosystem. So when you have a lot of Thrustmaster fans out there, people who are already using Thrustmaster equipment, maybe some have already bought the upgraded pedal set and then you're only looking at the modification, get them to that new era of a load cell. Now the next thing for me that I have to take into consideration is load cell versus hydraulic versus potentiometer. And for me, again, anyone can win on any kind of equipment. A, a regular G29 pedal set is fine. The two pedal set that comes with the T300 is fine once you get used to them. Obviously, I'm gonna use socks when using a pedal that is that light. However, 
the modulation, I keep using that word modulation when talking about using that pedal. There's just something, a light spring just allows me to flap that brake pedal. Yes, it's very quick, but I have to be very precise about distance. And that's a little bit harder to do on the fly, especially under emergency braking or oh, you know what moments of sim racing. When it comes to a load cell, when it comes to a hydraulic, first step, you're talking just what, like I said, in the steps of driving, you're talking about heavier pressure and that just prevents you from overdoing it a little bit more. You're talking about something that you can kind of balance on. It's almost like I feel like I'm holding a teeter-totter with my foot under braking and that moment that, that I'm about to get lock up, I can just kind of do this with just the slightest of pressure in my feet. And that's something that I just don't feel that I can do the same with a potentiometer set of pedals. And to finish this review, this is one thing I'm going to say, and I think I've said it before, but Thrustmaster should have done this a long time ago. Thrustmaster has some exceptionally good steering wheels out there, but their pedals have just never been something to brag about. So, so like I said, so many people might be using a Thrustmaster base with a fanatic set of pedals or some other adapted or even higher end pedals. And this is the affordable solution to answer or cure that Achilles heel of the Thrustmaster ecosystem that has been there for a long time. And I'm sure that'll inspire Thrustmaster to hopefully react, do their own, or even better, give us a full blown pro level pedal set from Thrustmaster. Many people would be very looking forward to that. Like I said, there is a 50 kilogram model that you can get. If you go to the BF Electronics website, you will find those items there, but you need to contact them in order to order the item. That way you can arrange for shipping and any special changes or things that you're gonna need. Bill's a great guy and he'll help you out. And one thing I do wanna finish with, Thank you for sending it in, Bill, and I'm so sorry for the amount of time it took me to do this review. I really meant to. I always loved In Concept. It was such a needed product. It just kept slipping through my schedule and not getting up to the lineup, but it was my pleasure to review it, and I'm very happy to have it in my Thrustmaster set, which is sitting on my VR rig with my TGT racing wheel. So it's a great combination. Very happy about it. Hope you enjoyed this review. I hope I told you everything you need to know, but again, if not, go to BF Electronics send Bill a message and ask him any questions that you have. Hopefully I've answered any questions that you need and showed you how to use it and it might be the perfect answer for you. That's going to do it for this one. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.